start. Um, welcome to the quality tech series uh, today with a presentation by Louisa Novak, um, vice president of the Polish Use Group. Uh, like she says, she doesn't know anything tech, but she does know how to present. Um, and I think like, like she already mentioned, there are a couple of people here who already seen these presentations, but they came back, so it must be really good. Um, Louisa, if you take over the screen, um, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, give me a second, share. And okay. Yes. Yeah, here it is. So again, hi, and thank you for being here with me. Uh, my name is Louisa Novak, and you might know me from POUG, which you might think stands for Polish ORAC User Group, but the truth is it's actually Pint with ORAC User Group. So today I will be speaking about presentations because although the POUG is the part of me related to the tech world, in my other not so secret life, I work in the communication industry and I've been connected to presentation field for like eight years now. So I've been presenting, uh, I've been doing presentations for big companies, individual clients. Uh, I've been teaching people how to make better presentations and how to prepare better slides. And as many of you, I've been attending many, many conferences. And sometimes looking at some presentations makes me dead inside. But although the visual part of the presentation can be hideous and really bad, the presentation can still be good. So the question is, how is it possible? Well, it's because visualization is only the fourth and least important layer of presentation. And by this, I mean, you can have bad slides, I mean, not bad, you can have ugly slides and still deliver a great presentation. But even with the previous slides, when you're not taking care of the previous layers, you won't be delivering a good speech. So let's now talk about previous layers of presentation. First, and the most important layer of presentation is content. And content answers the question, what new am I giving to my audience that they might find useful? And the useful part is the most relevant. So my clients used to ask me to put this type of data into slides and make it look good. And uh, well, obviously it doesn't work like this because you're mixing the layers. You cannot make a good presentation if you're not filtering your content properly. So it's really challenging to filter it properly because as an expert, we might face something what I called an expert dilemma. So you might think that everything that you want to share with your audience is important, which is obviously not. So what can help is to know that we can divide presentations um, into parts based on different criteria. So the first division is to divide them on internal and external presentations. So um, Patrick, as you my guide today, how do you think, what are the internal presentations? I think the internal presentations are the ones we have to do at the end of the sprint, demonstrate our uh, what we've been doing the last couple of um, weeks mostly. Yep, yeah, internal presentations are the one that we are presenting inside of an organization. So when we are working, it's a company usually. When you are studying, those are the presentations that we are presenting at the university and so on. And the external presentations are all the rest. For example, I am giving today an, an external presentation. And why is it important while filtering content? Well, imagine the situation when you are starting a new job in a new place. And during your first week, you are attending presentation. 
So there are some new words, new names, um, some charts, some maybe even parts of the code. So everything is new. And at first, you might feel a bit overwhelmed and confused with all those new information. But after a week or two or after a month, you start getting it. And then you might think, this is actually a really good presentation. Maybe we can use some slides from this presentation and we can show it to our clients because it's a great success story, let's say. So we usually remember while changing presentation from internal to external to get rid of um, confidential data. But why we can we might forget is that this new external audience is on the same position as we were a couple of months ago, but they don't have those months to get it as we, as we did. They have minutes or sometimes even seconds to process all the information. So this is really important while changing internal to external to remember that we working in some workplace, we are living in a bubble. We are sharing same stories and same examples with, uh, with our coworkers, but they might, this might not be clear to the people from outside this bubble. And our main goal is not to make our audience feel stupid. And why is that? I will tell you in a minute. So the second, um, the second division of presentation is with high or low inertia. So the inertia in this, in this particular case, we can understand as a public resistance to take any action. So if the inertia is high, um, there will be no questions, uh, there will be no discussion. And if the inertia is low, people will ask questions, interrupt and give you immediate feedback. So this presentation, for example, has crazy high inertia. And it's usually that way when you're presenting online because it's it's natural. I'm basically your background. You can do whatever you want right now. So why is it important in terms of filtering your data? So the higher the inertia, the less complicated data you should show to your audience. Again, because you don't want people to feel stupid because if people feel stupid, they won't buy from you, they won't change their behavior, they won't do what you want them to do because they don't understand why. But let's take a step back. Why do people feel stupid when the inertia is high? So you don't know if they're feeling stupid or not, but let's say you are presenting some complex examples and you're not receiving immediate feedback and you know that the chances that people will share their doubts with you are really low. So you don't know, you can just guess. So it's really helpful to know, to be prepared for the inertia, what you will have. For example, I am prepared for the high inertia while presenting online um, with the formula like this. So I have like, let's say 45 minutes to share some ideas and I know that this presentation will be more about inspiring you, about maybe changing a little bit the way that you are thinking about presentations, but this is not the time nor the place for analyzing complicated examples or discussing your cases with you. It will be if the inertia was low. So for example, if, if this was a training, so I could then show you some examples and we can all decide like what's working, what's not working. And the presentations with the high inertia are more about inspiring people and not sharing like low level knowledge. See what I did here? Okay, so let's say you you filtered your data based on different criteria. Is it enough? Is it enough when you have a good content to make people listen? Well, it doesn't. You need another layer and it's a story. The story is a way in which you're wrapping your content to make it interesting. Because during the whole presentation, your main goal is to make people listen. 
And the competition is really high, especially with the online presentations, because as I said before, I'm just a background. You can be checking your emails, you can be doing whatever you want. So I need to believe that what I am telling you will make you interested. How can we do this? Well, we can create a story. And I think this is a good time to enhance the fact that, as I said before, I am not an Oracle expert nor a technical expert, but I have friends in the IT world. So I asked some of them to help me with this presentation and to use to, to give me the examples that can resonate with you. But again, those are people from the IT industry. So I cannot be sure are those examples legit? So they swear to me that those are legit examples, that they are not making funny of me because I don't understand those words, but I hope there are. So I will share you some examples. I will share some examples with you right now. So we can tell, we can share a content with our audience in a two different ways. First is just sharing plain facts. So thanks to reducing network latency, we reduce the amount of TX row low contention weight event. I hope that words mean something. So this is the way just like telling people facts. And it's, it's okay, right? It might be interesting some, for some of you, it might not be interesting. But you can do this any other way. We have to reduce the ridiculous amount of TX row low contention weight event which were the main stopper in performance testing at the new platform. After a lot of tracing, we found the main reason and we were, we were able to solve the problem, but you won't believe where the problem actually was. So even for me, a non-technical person, it's obvious that there's a story here. So if you wanna hear the rest of the story, you need to listen. So people, will be curious, what's next? So, okay, so what happened with this ridiculous amount of TX row low contention event, if you're fond of it. So creating, like delivering your content in a way and with a story, this is a weapon for you to fight for your audience attention, which is very, very important. So let's say you, you have your content filtered, you wrap it in a story, but we all know that one person that can ruin even the best joke. And this is why we need speaker's performance. We need to practice our presentation. And I know like we all know people that are amazing on stage. Like they had this amazing charisma. They just walk in and the stage is theirs. And congrats to them. I personally know one, one person like this very well, but for the rest of us, practicing really makes a difference. And when people ask me what to do not to not be so stressed before the presentation, I always tell them that it's all about practicing, practicing, practicing. So my cats and my husband know everything about presentation layers because I was, I'm constantly practicing my presentations and telling them out loud because it's really important when you're preparing your content to do it, like to say it even to your computer as you were saying it during the presentation, during your speech. So those were three really important layer of presentation. And when you have a choice, if you, like if you have, let's say, if you have an hour before your presentation and you must think about, and you might, you must pick, uh, either to practice more or maybe changing some colors or something like this, always pick practicing because those three layers are more important than the fourth, the visualization. But even though this is not the most important layer of presentation, if it's well done, it can help you a lot. So it can, it can help you as a speaker, uh, but it can also help you, uh, your audience to be, to process the data faster and in a better way, more efficient way. So I'm saying I'm using the visualization word a lot. So like it's sophisticated or something, but we all know the question is how not to make ugly slides. While the question should be how not to make bad slides because ugly slides are sometimes 
very useful and pretty slides not always fills their roles. What are the roles of slides? It's really helpful to know that every slide should fulfill at least one role. And if, if it's not, you need to get rid of it or change it immediately. So what are the roles? The first role of slide is a teaser. And it's similar as uh, a movie teaser. So it gives you a hint of what you're gonna what you're gonna see in a minute, what you're gonna hear in a minute. But what type of teasers, movie teaser, teasers we don't like? Patrick, how do you think? What kind don't we like? Yeah, what type of movie teasers annoy annoy us? Annoy us? Which are uh, very long and they give away too much. Yeah. We don't like spoilers, right? right. We don't like spoilers. Uh, exactly. And it's the same with the presentation. If you want your presentation to be interesting, you cannot give people everything at once. So, so teasers are, for example, so teasers are those slides when you have only one information. For example, title slide or a slide with the name of your product or uh, presenting a new team leader. So just one information, not too much that like people will process this information and come back to you immediately if they want to know everything because not everything gets on slide. So it's pretty easy to make a good teaser. It's just, you know, there's just like one rule, not give them too much, but okay. So I am using some graphic design here, but it could also be, just the word teaser and we'll be all fine. When we have more than one information on a slide, so uh, that's, let's face it, like in 99% of the times, we need booster. So booster is everywhere there when you have more than one information. So when you have bullet points, when you have a part of code, when you have um, a table, a chart, a graph, like, many when you're sharing more than one information so boosters are pretty hard to uh, to design because even though you have many in, like a lot of information on your slide you need to divide them and you need to share one information at a time so you need to decide how will you highlight this information at this moment to channel your audience attention to what you want and the third role of slide is a punchline. And punchline is, it's like an end of some part of your presentation. It's an end to, to a story. So it's also not so easy to prepare a punchline um, because you first need a story, obviously. And secondly, you never know if it's gonna, if it's gonna make them laugh, if the, you know, because punchline should make us feel somehow it should make us laugh to be funny or sad or like amaze us or something like that so sometimes you're trying really hard but there's just you know no reaction and in the online presentations there's no reaction at all so the question is should we even use slides like this during the online presentation well i think yes because um Punchlines are the moments from the presentation that your audience will remember. For example, it, it doesn't have to be a meme. It can be like, let's say you have a story that, um, and because they didn't implement the changes that we were recommending, they lost $2 million, $2 million last year. And you're showing people the number $2 million. So this is a punchline, it's the end of the story. So even though you don't hear the laugh or you do, don't see the, the amazed faces, it doesn't mean they're not there. So I think in my opinion, it's good to practice punchlines. It's good to you and it's good to your audience. So I am telling, I'm telling you about punchlines, about teasers, about boosters, but let's now talk about um, more, the, more, the more common slide, the bullet point. So we cannot escape bullet points, um, but we can, we can make them look better and we can make them better. So how do you guys think 
Patrick, why is a bullet point in that form not the best option to present? You, you're asking me? I was reading the slide, so it didn't. Oh. <laughs> OK, yeah, we have the answer, right? That's the, that's the problem. That's the problem, exactly. So when you're showing people text, they immediately start reading because we were born and raised in a culture that tells us that what has been written is more important than what has been said. So, and second thing is that our audience thinks that if we as a speaker put this text into slide, that means it, it matters, you know, it, you know you, they need to read it. So we are becoming a background to our own slide. And I don't know if you guys, I think some of you are from Netherlands, some from UK, some from Germany, some from Austria probably. I don't know how often are you watching movies with subtitles, but when I'm saying one thing and I'm showing different text on slide, it's like we are watching a movie with subtitles and the subtitles skips like five seconds forward or backwards. It's just annoying, you know, when it's not aligned. Um, so this is not a good way of showing people information because we have more than one information here and we're not dividing it. So how to do it in a proper way? Let's take another, let's see another example. So here we have um, a bullet point. It's about how to organize a user group. And it's this particular slide is about the fact that you need to have passion. You need to like uh, organizing a user group is not a, easy task, but if you have passion, it's gonna be a great fun for you. So showing people this slide in that, for, in that form is no good for the reasons that we just talked about. So how we can make it better in the simplest way. So in the simplest way, we should just use animations and we should just show every information, one information at a time, but still, there's just too much text here. And remember that even if you, you're going to read it out loud, your audience will read it faster in their mind. And you will be always like, they will be always way ahead of you. So this is still not the perfect solution. So the second step should be to make those sentences shorter like this. So in that way, not only they will read it fast and came back, come back to you, but also they understand that this is like, this is not enough, you know? You didn't put everything you know on your slide. So if they want to know the whole context, you, they need to listen. So this is a weapon. So your, your slide is your friend here, you know? Because the slide is telling, okay, you need to listen to the speaker if you, if you will if you want to see the whole picture. But if we are really, really honest, if we will analyze this slide, you might think that, okay, so a key person, that person cares, da, da, da. This slide is, uh, this is a teaser, you know? It can be just this. If you are prepared, I, I could just take this slide and I could just talk to this. You don't need a whole, like a bullet point list to say that a key person needs to care, it takes effort, blah, 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 because there's no numbers here. There, there's not like, no complicated data. So it can be just a teaser. You have to have passion and then you're talking about, you're talking about it. So there is a one for sure disadvantage of this attitude. So if I was, sending this type of presentation to people that, for example, were not attending my presentation, this is not enough for them, you know, because what does it mean you have to have passion? When there's no speaker, you need the second version of your visualization, slide docs. And before you will tell me that you don't have time to make one version of your presentation and let alone two versions, let me explain. So slide docs, uh, are the version of the presentation that you are sending to your audience after your speech. And they have to be different than slides because their roles are also different. So 
the role of a slide dog is to tell you everything. So the better text, like you need to put all the text you have into the slide dogs to be sure that when you're not there as a speaker, your, your audience, your recipients will also get the whole context. So those roles are completely different and you cannot use one version to fulfill all the goals. So if we need the more text, the better, does it mean that this is a good slide doc? Well, not exactly, because this, the second role of slide doc is to lead your audience, your recipients, through the presentation. Because we all know that um, in the internet, we are not reading the whole text, we are just scanning it. So it would be cool to design a slide doc that will help, like the, the, that can point out to your audience what are the most important parts of this presentation, like using colors, uh, different size of letters, and so on. So make it easy to read so people will, will read it. And obviously, you don't have to make two versions of a presentation if you can send a presentation, like not a PDF, but just like PPT, PPTX. And then you can just use your slides and put the text in the speaker's note. Okay, so the question was how not to med make bad slides. How? Let's start with some basics. Uh, fonts. So every font have has a meaning. And if you don't believe me, uh, please take a ride with me in this type of Porsche. And here you have a letter from your lover that we will miss. And here you should probably you should, you should probably call the police, not from this thing, but the, the police. And it's even that sometimes when you're looking at, at text, at letters, you can feel that something's, something is expensive. Like, in your opinion, Patrick, which water is more expensive to you? I think the one on the right, number two. Number two. Okay, so can I guys, can I ask you guys to, to write on chat? I will check it later. Which water, in your opinion, is, is more expensive? And we will see. Uh, okay, I see some results are coming. Well, it's about half half. Half half. Okay, that's interesting. A little bit more for two. Okay, so we have some connotations with with fonts and um, we don't realize even how does it work but we can tell like some shapes some styles um, are associated with the things that we already know so we may think like for me it's obvious that the water number two is more expensive and here i don't know you guys don't know polish but i assume that you don't know polish but you don't, you don't have to so this is a list of our like ministers in our government. And for me, and I, I, I feel for most of you, this looks like a burger menu. So you don't, you don't have to be a graphic designer to feel that there's something wrong with using this type of font and this type of graphic design. It's just like, you don't have to be an expert. It's just like, you're a user, you can, you can feel it. Or maybe I am wrong. Maybe you. Maybe you feel. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't have that. I must say I was looking for the prices. <laughs> Food prices, right? It's yeah. a menu. It's a menu of our ministers. I won't take it. I don't want any of it. I don't. I. I won't eat it. Okay. So again, I was asking my um, tech friends to give me some tech example, and for and they told me that. Uh, then to, they told me that it's better to use courier font to show. Um, to to write a to write a code instead of this Calibri, um, mostly because it's more visible and the spaces are bigger, so it's it's just easier to read. Let's now talk about colors, and it'll be a really short discussion. So, colors have meanings as well, and I'm not I'm not saying that you know, yellow roses means jealousy or something like this. I'm saying that especially red color is connected when we're talking about numbers with something negative. I know that in this particular industry and especially in the database world, 
red is also connected to oracle maybe you know I'm not saying wrong it's negative or anything but when you're showing this type of message is just like scratching your brain because this is not really correct this is more correct and um if you have okay so like for now like the quality has like this orange red color this is different because everyone is expecting you'll be using red color but if your company logo is green and you're using red in your presentation they they it might feel like it's something negative especially on charts or with numbers so be careful we're using this also be careful with using colors with that are not really like con contrast um that's really good with contrasting because um okay it's possible to read it but also not really comfortable especially when we know that uh two out of ten people this is data for for poland i don't know how it's in europe have problems with um with colors per perception so when when in doubt just try to use a lot of contrast to be sure that everyone that it's clear for everyone in fact that if you start thinking while designing your presentation if something's gonna be visible that is a sign that in my night it might not be photos i am a big fan of using photos in presentations and i know people like photos love photos it's always good to add a photo of a graphic or a graphic to your text because it helps with the perception but please don't do this i mean there are so many reality free photos in the good quality in the internet there's no excuse for using for stealing stealing graphic design for like google typing people with the computers don't don't do this uh if you want i i will share um some materials after the presentation i will send you my favorite websites with legit good quality photos that you know you can you can check but don't do this and play with photos because this is this might look as a big burger but in fact this is a big burger so don't be afraid of using the perspective and show people the part of the photo that really matters because when you're showing people code like this people will stop stop analyzing it's just too frustrating just pick the most important part and focus on this okay so i've been talking about presenting for like 25 minutes right now or 30 and this is the part when i will be telling you about slides with data so the first and most important not sorry the first but the least important part of slide with data is the background which should be really basic really plain um you know and the reason why it should be like this is because we want our data to shine. We want it to be visible. So um, our background should not be the competition for our data. But the most important part of a slide with data is the emphasis. So this is the part that I was talking about before that should be contrasting to the other elements. So when you're showing a part of the code, a chart, a booster basically that you're like that you're showing people more than one information you should always enhance the one that you're talking about right now so it should be always you should always you should be always channeling attention to this one part of a slide so when you're thinking how can i make my data speak for itself the answer is data is introvert so it will help to give it like a lot of space personal space and to provide a quiet peaceful environment and this is not a quiet nor peaceful environment for anything for not for data so don't use uh millions of colors weird perspective 3d effects because it just it just gets, gets blurry and you can you cannot tell Where's, where's the emphasis? What's the most important part of my slide here? It's really hard to tell. So another really important thing when preparing slides with data is what, what's the conclusion? Like, what is the most important message I want to leave them with? So 
let's say I am a subway manager and I am telling my team that they did an amazing job and uh, you know the results were great. Uh, in North America, we are better than McDonald's and uh, McDonald's is a symbol of North America. We, uh, we are just like so close to McDonald's in South America and this year will be all about Asia and Europe. So can I use this slide to tell this story? Well, obviously I can, but this slide is not helping me. This slide tells a completely different story. So make sure you're designing your slide, designing slides in a way that, that are boosting your message, that are helping you as a speaker, and they're also helping your audience process the information that you're telling, telling them about. And how to do this? Well, with contrast that I've been mentioning before. So we as a people will notice different color, um, different shape, uh, size. Like we will notice that something is different and we can use contrast as a friend or as an enemy in our presentation. So the first part will be not to make it enemy. How can we make the contrast our enemy? Well, let's say, we have 10 slides and during the eight slides, we are using Times New Roman in a blue color. And on the two last slides, we are using Calibri in black. So your audience will notice and they will start wonder why is it different? Like, is it because uh, we want to highlight something or is it just wrong copy paste? So we are, we are losing our audience attention because we were sloppy. So if we don't want to, the contrast to be our enemy, just don't be sloppy. Like use one type of one type of font, uh, like one color. Just, you know, my grandma used to say that if you cannot afford expensive clothes, let your one, yours will be just let <laughs> let yours be clean. And this is like with this presentation. If you can if you don't really, if you're not really good with graphic design, um, just be plain and simple, but not sloppy. So, and how can we make contrast our friend if it's not already an enemy? Well, um, the best way is to think about what we want to highlight. Like here, uh, when we literally highlighting this one one part of the slide, or here when they the background is blurred or here when we're using a color or here or and the next example i think it's your favorite because i see it very often like five years old so with the code for example you can be you can show people the whole part of the code but you can also enhance like this one particular line in with color or with the shady background. Okay, so this is like, as I said before, this is just an inspiration. And I know that every, like every presentation is a little bit different and uh, there are some exceptions and so on. And the truth is like, every presentation is a risk because we don't know what the audience will be. We don't know if it's not gonna be like a technical disaster and, I will tell you I know something about it, but it's it's just you know you don't have to be you don't you doesn't have you doesn't have to be you don't have to be a great graphic designer or hard has this a huge amount of charisma. You just have to follow some basic rules and be respectful to your audience. Treat them with respect. And I know you guys are good with math. And I know the risk you're taking is always calculated. So I'm like confident that you got this. Thank you.